so I <laughs> I went live on Facebook. I'm trying to like do a live video on Facebook and then come over and do a live video on Instagram. But I don't even know if I actually did it. But I got some some stuff to talk about. Um, and I hope that you're inspired and empowered after you hear this because we are um, oftentimes running through our daily lives, pursuing our own dreams and goals, taking care of our families. Maybe even we're maybe we're even dealing with sickness and things like that. But we are not aware of these things. And this message is not to instill fear. That is not it. This message is to educate. It's to put a seed in you so that you understand your surroundings. So I want to talk about three things. I want to talk about housing. I want to talk about education. And I want to talk about business. So as far as housing, a lot of us own homes and a lot of us rent and homeowners have went through the process of renting and renters some of them have been doing it their entire lives and it's okay for them because they're in a safe place they have a landlord who is worth having who is not a slum lord who is taking care of them so it's all good but a lot of us are in these urban cores like within Cincinnati <clears throat> where there is a lot of development going on where I live, there's a lot of development going on. Where I work, there's a lot of development going on. Not to say that all development is bad, but there is something that is missing. I will say that for sure. Um, so when you think about yourself or people around you, some people are good people. Some people have great motives and intentions for life. Some people are just trying to get by, taking care of their families, pursuing their dreams. Some people are uh, disabled to the point where they can't work, so they got to kick it. You know what I'm saying? They get out and they do what they can't do in their communities. And when you think about all of these different groups of people, we all fall under a category of making about eight bucks to 30 bucks an hour. And I'm particularly talking about the group that makes about eight to fifteen dollars an hour. So in the the uh, Cincinnati area, the 52 neighborhoods, you will find a very high concentration of people that make this type of money. And then that that calls for a huge need of affordable housing. Most of us probably live in affordable housing. Doesn't mean that it's public housing, project housing, but it's affordable housing. And I'm not saying anything is wrong with public or project housing. I'm going to talk about that too. Um, but basically, we are people who pay rent from about, some Some of us are $25 to about, I'll say about $1,000. Um, and so this is a comfortable pocket for the majority of us and then you have people who will go above that who are maybe two households making over about forty thousand um, dollars well let's see it's about forty thousand dollars a year potentially forty forty five thousand dollars or something like that um but for the most part we're seeing a lot of us in this um this bracket so with that being said when we see a lot of the the projects that are going on like over the Rhine particularly the a lot of the housing projects that they put in the place down there do not accommodate families with four five six children you know what I'm saying um you will see a lot of condos or even townhouses being made um, two bedrooms or three bedrooms. So you know that it's not geared towards fa towards big families. And majority on uh, of those on the strips are uh, two bedroom, one bed studios. So there is a standard that's in place that is being implemented in communities that's pushing out artists, that's pushing out the elderly who make under 30 grand a year, I would say, um, the, the single parents, the families, you know, it's not created for them, us, I will say. And so we have a, a big, big lack going on um, here in America, not just in Cincinnati. There are 40,000 units, vacant units here in Cincinnati. Um, and that's pretty crazy, right? Think about that for a minute. So more than 11 million families who are low income 
pay more than half of their income on rent. Now, a lot of us are even in that place. We pay more than half. And so we're struggling to pay utilities, groceries, pay for the kids' sports and their activities, pray for, uh, pay for classes to move us to the next level as artists, as entrepreneurs. We are struggling tremendously and uh, the land that we in which we live on is not even created for us. And if it is created for us, someone in a higher place created a standard that says only a certain amount of us can live. So low income doesn't mean, it just doesn't mean that you're on welfare. Everyone always thinks that. Let me tell you right now that a lot of you who are going to join in and watch this, um, you are there. You are, you are at that line. And I'm not going to get into those details too much more. I can put um, a post up on my Instagram that gives you the details. But when you think about the rent that you pay, say $25 bucks to $900, that's pretty much affordable. Okay? that That is really affordable. Okay? Um, and so... On Facebook, I was talking about a family that's looking for a house with a four, five, six, maybe even seven bedroom, you know, and most of those um, units are about thirteen hundred to nineteen hundred dollars. Think of a single mom or a single dad. They just can't afford that, especially if they're making eight dollars, nine dollars, ten dollars, eleven dollars, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seven. I mean, they can't afford that. It's not gonna happen. Seventeen dollars. Even if you made uh nineteen dollars, even at twenty dollars, you know, you are in a weird place. Most of um most of the houses that have those many bedrooms you're not going to get them for 900 and under. If you do, you are blessed by God. Number one, I must say. Number two, if you do, it might be a slumlord who's going to give you a very dilapidated building with piss poor maintenance, maintenance, etc., etc. So we're in this weird predicament right now, guys. A lot of us are students. Oh my goodness. If you don't get in one of those fancy new apartments up in Clifton, you have to room with five or six other people. Nothing's wrong with that. That's fun. As long as everybody's cleaning and, you know, doing their part. Communal living. Um, but the problem is a lot of students want to give up because they got to work this crazy job to pay for this apartment and all the apartments up in the area are well over a thousand dollars even if it's a one bedroom like i said if it goes a little lower you are either blessed by god or you are getting a piece of crap landlord so we now are in a place where affordable we we are in a crisis right now guys um you may not realize it some of you in your in in your comfort but some of you are feeling the pains of this. We are in a crisis and now um, we actually have to get up and do something about it. So if you are interested in that, you can inbox me. We can talk more about that. But I want to let you know that there are things happening around Cincinnati, um, around housing that are just unacceptable. When I was a child, me and my father... Um, were pushed out of our house. They paid us $1,006. And they told us that we had to find a place in a certain amount of days. And I believe it was like 30 to 90 days. So we found the place literally right up the street. Come to find out, few a year later, bed bugs was infested in this place. I mean, it was horrible. Landlord didn't have to tell us. He's making money. They don't have to tell you a lot of things. But with that being said, the city had initiated this thing and there were no extra resources to make sure that we would go on and transition into a better house because they gave us such a short notice. And now in that area where we used to live, it's called Hamlet Row. It's all completely rehabbed houses and I believe the rents are $1,000 and above. And so this stuff is real, you guys. Um, I'm not making this up. And some people around the tri-state have went through it. I've 
had a lot of people talk to me. Um, I've walked alongside others and, you know, it's real. So I want this to change. So like I said, I want you to inbox me. Thinking about education right now. Um, this is awesome. This is my first time going live. Thank you girls for um, tuning in and listening. I really appreciate it. Um, I hope that you are empowered for the most part, and I hope that you will become more aware of exactly what's going down in your communities around housing. So I love this quote from Thomas Jefferson. He said, man is an Im imitative animal. This quality is the germ of all education in him. From his cradle to his grave, he is learning to do what he sees others do. Now, this is the foundation of education, is that we as humans, we mimic everything that we see. Everything that we do right now, we are copying what we have seen someone else do. Someone else showed us this every single day for five to seven days for 300. I don't know. But that is why we have gotten to the place um, of knowing how to do certain things. So when you think about school and you think about the place that you were in as a child or the place that your children are in or the place that you're thinking about putting your children in, I, I see a big gap. There is a big, big disparity there because there are so many things that children need to learn because children will not always be children they will grow into adults so schools need to teach youth how to grow into adults and because the curriculum is not created in such a way that's why we have so many children dropping out of public of public school that's why teachers have so much tension with students because curriculums are not created to accommodate the child, their skill, their ability, and their learning style. And teachers, I love teachers. Don't get me wrong. I know a lot of good teachers, but there's not enough of them in the public school system. And that's the problem. They get bullied up against one teacher, just got suspended from her school because she talked to the news about the horrendous bullying that was going on in her school and they would not take care of it. So they fired her. Look at that. The one good teacher being ostracized. So a lot of teachers go through college because they're they just like us little girls. We are a little boy saying, man, I just want to grow up and be a teacher. We want to do something good. We want to help people. But we don't understand that when you are in the public school, you are in the trenches. When you go to the urban community, just remember that you have students who have come from being sexually abused, physically abused. Daddy shot mama. Mama shot daddy. Mama got beat. She stuck in the closet. Mama killed herself. Daddy went to jail. He had big bags of white stuff. You know, I slept in the house for five days. So a lot of teachers don't understand how to take on something like that because they've never experienced something like that in their lives, nor do they understand how to teach multiple different personalities. So you have two, you have the kids against the teachers, or the teachers against the kids, because the system is tremendously flawed. No, we cannot change that system, but we can do something else for our children and do something else for the youth. Because a lot of us know who have went through public school, high school, and college that there are so many things that we learned and that we paid for in that process that we don't even use. And we feel like we were tricked. Some people land jobs. Some people land great opportunities, but not all. It's not a guarantee, although you're paying all those thousands of dollars. So thinking about the federal portion of this, now, really quickly, schools, they create the standards. They create the requirements. And a lot of the times when this has happened, I will probably say about 90 8% of the time. Parents have no input on this. So your child or the children that you mentor or deal with are going into settings where their abilities are not being tapped into. Their capacity is not being stretched. Why? Because a certain type of standard was put in place by a certain group who does not understand your child. So you have given your child over to this system and 
That's why we even have so much tension as parents with our children because our children are dragging so much garbage from the public school that it's ridiculous. So, back on to the, uh, off of the rant, back onto the topic. <laughs> um, in addition, federal law mandates that state standards are developed and improved in order for states to receive federal assistance. My people, watch out watch where you send your children it is dangerous in our nation right now in public schools it's dangerous because your child could potentially go to school and be beat to death left in a bathroom where teachers don't even see that your child is knocked out and then and then you know horrible things happen um So many ugly things are happening inside of public schools, private schools, universities in general, that it is ridiculous. How dare we, with so much freedom, let dollars delegate what our children are teach? We cannot be so naive this time, guys. We have to really take a stand and say, I would like for my children to learn this, this, and this, so I need to find an alternative. You can talk to me about that, too an alternative sorry I keep scratching my nose I think I got a lot of dust over here so um but education is just repetition y'all I had a um music teacher that I love 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 he used to cuss us out and everything he was but I still loved him um and I got really excited a few it was actually several years back but I was like Mr. Adam so excited I was like I've, I've like found my gift. I've found my talent. I can sing. Um, I can arrange music. I can play instruments. I'm going to college. You know, the first thing he said to me, I think this man has like masters and everything. He's like, don't do it. It's a joke. And I looked at him and I said, well, wait a minute. This is the American way. This is what you guys taught us that we should grow up, graduate, go to college and oh, we're guaranteed so he broke some things down to me and it was um it hurt it did hurt um but then as I took my journey to go and do this school thing and finish my schooling I had a strong sense inside of me that I shouldn't even be inside of the place and so eventually I left the college I left all that I left I left it um and so for a man who had been teaching for maybe 30, 40, 50 years, um, who had done some really amazing things to tell me that, to be honest with me, that was a beautiful thing because people always tell youth and tell other people that that is the way. And that is not the way to freedom. A lot of people go through college and they discover that they want to do a little something. They may go through and finish and they may feel like that ain't even my thing. But I just went through college, you know, for that. And I don't even have a job that matches up with my degree, you know. So it it is a very strange, strange way to think about freedom. I ultimately believe that God guides us in the freedom. We can be free as a result of having a college degree. But that is not the reason we're free. That is only a part of it. Only a part of it. So... With that being said, um, what would what would I change in the schools? First of all, teachers need to go through extensive immersive immersive cha um, training. They need to go to um, sociology, psychology. Um, they also need to go through um, uh, sociology, psychology. Uh, design thinking, which is something that's really um, popular right now in, in colleges. It's just um, a, a more creative approach to just everything, which that's just me as an artist and all artists. So they put a name on it and put money behind it. You know how they do here in America. They capitalize everything. Uh, but that is something I feel is extremely important. You have to know how to mediate. You have to know how to dis discern and differentiate when you're dealing with a bunch of different kids, with a bunch of different personalities, from a bunch of different backgrounds. You cannot be successful in the classroom if you don't understand these different things. If you're coming in 
and you've been trained up to learn how to teach a curriculum and how to deliver a curriculum, you're in big, big trouble. So that's what I'm seeing a whole lot is that people are sticking by policies and sticking by the book and missing the mark to make a real connection with youth and really just spur them on and greatly like empower them. So um, I don't know who that is. TB3290. Oh. That is um, my input on what I would change in schools. Schools definitely, the, the, another thing, schools definitely need to be more um, experiential. Kids don't want to sit in a classroom all day long. We know this, okay? Kids go buck wild and go crazy. And teachers are calling and emailing and texting. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. They're going crazy. They're going crazy because they've been sitting all day long. Some of us right now, we are feeling this live feed because we are people who learn by audio. Some of us are feeling it even more because you got a visual going on. And then there's some of us who are more tactile. We have to be up. We have to be moving. We have to learn the message with our hands or we just won't get it. So those are just a few things that I've observed over the last 10 years working in schools, working with youth and even being a parent and then hearing from the community at large about different things. Those are the, de the definite um, things that I would change first. Um, leadership for sure. Leadership is extremely important. So thinking about um, business really quickly. Business is so important. Um, I utilize it every day here in America. There are certain things that I just can't make. I can't make a stove, yet I can put a grill together in my backyard. I can buy one from the store. I can manually do it with uh, stone and charcoal and et cetera, et cetera. But I use a stove. You know what I'm saying? Um, I use a car. And businesses have sold those things to me. So it is a great asset to our nation, yet it is also a great downfall because many businesses uh, have oppressed and enslaved people and I think we miss that a lot because we are in our 40 hour jobs we are working we're dealing with our kids we're dealing with our loved ones and we need to be free so we escape into these places or with these products and in reality these products and these places are destroying us so I gave a few examples when I was on Facebook but I ain't trying to just dive that deep but as far as women, women are the perfect example of how products have deceived us, tricked us, and destroyed us. I mean, it is it is wild. I was in the store the other day, and they had these drawers, and the drawers, I guess, is supposed to... They had booty, booty pads in the drawers, pretty much. So it was... To make your bigger your booty look bigger, so um, <clears throat> I noticed that there weren't a lot a lot of them left. So I know that women had been buying them because uh, hip hop and certain movies and things in the media edify a woman with a big booty. Now I have a lot of gluteus maximus. Okay, I will say that. Um, but what what I will say is that. <laughs> It has been put on a pedestal way too high. Um, it is not the reason that people should be seeking a relationship, but that is the reason because it's been commercialized. So as far as women, like we can have fake boobs, we get implants, we get implants in our lips, our nose, you can get your eye color changed. You don't like your hair, you can get, you know, hair uh, weaved down to your butt crack. Um, women are so deceived. It is, it's, it's wild. And so that is a really good example of how products are killing us. Food is another thing. There is millions of companies that create food. No, it ain't doing none of us any good. It's not giving us no strength. It's giving us cancer, diabetes, inflammation, tumors. I mean, acne. I mean, the list can go on. Killing our babies inside of our womb. dealing, uh, Tearing up the way we digest food. Skin diseases so that is a form of destruction and oppression because you cannot bounce back if you keep putting these products inside of your body buying these products i guess you know i'll talk about some products that really affect men you know like just cars and houses and 
men are working out and they want to be super toned and you know things may not be going right at home so they they run off to the gym and they get it cracking you know what i'm saying but that's not going to fix your problems that's going to fix your body but that's not going to fix your emotional problems at home and you know they they capitalize more on women i will say the industry is geared way more towards women because we are at home more um we have to we're the ones shopping more so a lot of the products are are geared toward uh, toward us um but we have to evaluate and examine the places that we go to and the products that we buy because we are supporting tyrant leadership we are supporting leadership that don't give a crap about whether we live or die we're just a number um and we also have to examine and explore whether this is empowering our families um there's a lot of products that are geared toward families that are no 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 good toxic poisonous um and just cause the addictive behaviors that we really don't we don't want so I want you guys to, um, like myself, as I go on throughout the year, just examine what you're supporting, why you're supporting it. Is it hereditary? Is it something that your parents supported? Did you um, develop these habits while you were in elementary school, middle school, high school, college? Have you, um, you know, developed these habits because of the place that you work, you feel pressured in, you're like, everybody's like, ah, come on. So you were there and now, 10 years later, everybody stopped doing it. You still doing it five, two years, whatever. Really got to think about these things because at the end of the day, we, I believe strongly that God says that we should live life abundantly. And so when I look around and see majority of people, I don't see that happening, but we can get out. It could totally happen if we start examining the people, the places and the the products that we decide to invest in with our hard-earned money or waste time in. So anyways, thank you guys for tuning in to my first um, live feed here on Instagram. I'm so excited Instagram is doing this. And I think I might switch to Instagram Instagram, and I use Facebook anymore. I'm thinking about that a lot. Uh, but y'all know what it is. It's revolutionary love, y'all. We actually got to be it this year. We can't just talk about it or think about it. So this message was intended to make you aware if you are not aware and stir you up if you were already pondering things like this. And if you don't agree, feel free to not agree. But when it comes knocking at your door, my arms are always open for you. So I love y'all. I'll see you soon. Have a wonderful Sunday. Did I end? Did I end? No?